Hey guys, welcome back to my channel Life with Ali. So today I have come uh, one hour from Dubai uh, on the border of Sharjah and Ajman. Um, can you see behind me? This is literally uh, on the outskirts and I've come to see a friend's farm. He's into hydroponic farming. Let's go inside. <laughs> so we've arrived. Hi. We're gonna go in now, and this is my friend Jay. It's his farm. I've never been to such a farm before, so I'm very excited to see how crops and plants actually grow in in such an environment. media plantation uh, this looks like soil maybe in the camera but there is no soil that is used in order to plant this it's all hydroponics I have uh, Bhaskar so with me right now he is a senior agronomist here who knows everything about this kind of farming so so you want to say hi hi let's find out how a plantation is done here hydroponics basically is of two types one is uh, the solution culture means the plants grow directly in the water and the other is media culture where the plants have some sort of media so they grow in the media yeah. what you'll do here is uh, is what With, through what medium it is not the solution this is a passive or a media culture Whereby we use uh, uh, cocoa peat or perlite or rock wool, any sort of grow media, which helps to retain the moisture and also helps to helps in anchoring the plant. Guys, this is all the cocoa peat that you see, which looks like soil, but it's not soil. And through this media, what kind of crops grow? Like I can see a lot of, uh, I mean, as as I can see, there are various various types of plants here. So, so what exactly grows? What is easy to grow? Growing in this media culture, we are growing all sorts of leafy greens. Okay. We are doing uh, wine crops, tomatoes, cucumbers, eggplant, uh, okra. The crops that could be grown are many. All the crops could be grown in passive hydroponics. In the hydroponics, which whereby we use coco peat or any sort of media, all the crops, all vegetables could be grown. Limitations for hydroponics in the solution culture are only to lettuces, leafy greens, and herbs. Here you can grow any, any plant that you can, okay. So what all have you guys grown here? Like, uh, can I, can I see some specific plants? These are strawberry, strawberry plants? Strawberry plants, yeah. Okay, so they're not grown yet, but yeah. this is how strawberry hmm. grows. Yeah, so they have the same type of media, perlite media. Okay, and this you, is coco peat. Coco peat and perlite. So this white one is the perlite. Okay. Which is a uh, volcanic uh, uh, material, stone, okay. that absorbs water and helps in porosity, to improve the porosity of water. Okay. Uh, water fertigation, fertilizer and water is mixed and given through this pipe, it is called a drip line, it is called a dripper. Yeah. So it drips and whatever water is drained goes back into the system and it is recirculated. So we have, uh, uh, we are using very less of water, maybe only 10% of water compared to the traditional agriculture. Okay. So, this, so this kind of farming is like really sustainable. Very much sustainable. Also you don't have any sort of uh, uh, soil contamination, soil micro, soil contamination also because you are not using soil. This, this is, is a mint plantation. It's organic so you can eat it. 
Jaipur. This is the ghost pepper plant. And all of this is again coco peat. Yes, all these are all hydroponics. There hydroponics. Is no soil. These okay. are all hydroponics. We are growing them in uh, soilless media. Okay. Wow. This is sweet Italian basil. <laughs> what a beautiful plant. This is the lemon basil. an edible flower guys this is what we see in all the fine dine restaurants that we wonder whether we can eat or not this is a sage plantation and in such a weather especially when it's so hot like uh, how do you guys manage uh, the climate see uh we are dealing with something called CEA, which is called Controlled Environment Agriculture. So whatever this greenhouse you are seeing in is a controlled environment agriculture. So we control all the parameters of growth, like light intensity, humidity, temperature, uh, water temperature, air temperature, and of course the nutrition. So all these parameters are controlled and it could be done 365 days a year if you have a perfect uh, climate controlled greenhouse. Those are the fans on this side. And on the other side, those brown, uh, like the brown wall that you see right opposite me, are the cooling pads. So, so the fans and the cooling pads help in maintaining the temperature inside and keeps the temperature in control. Doesn't let it get too hot because in Dubai it can get extremely, extremely hot. That was uh, one of their greenhouse rooms or the hydroponic farming rooms. Now we're going to go to the next room. Uh, so let's see how big that is. The next greenhouse. Wow. This looks bigger than the previous one and more fully grown. Right now, I'm getting attracted to all <laughs> these pretty colors. So, I want to show you. Which plants are these? What's growing this here? Is Swiss chard. Okay. -A -A okay. Swiss chard. They come in various colors, okay. red, yellow and green. Wow. Rainbow chart, it's called the rainbow chart. Rainbow chart. Yeah. So, just a little fun fact, uh, all these colorful plants, there are yellows, reds, greens, all of them. and. The fun fact is that their roots are also of the same color. So yellow plants have yellow roots, red have red, and green have green. Are mainly used in uh, rolling food because that's how the, the leaves are. So it's, it's used for food rolling plus uh, for salads, for baking and stuff like that. And mostly European countries consume this a lot. technology called tandem cooling where uh, the temperature stays uh, around 29 degrees Celsius uh, where a certain kind of plants that really cannot grow in a lot of heat grow here. This is what I was talking about. This is the temperature. What we have created is a 
your car may like you have in car that the internal air conditioning uh, you know recirculates. Yeah. So this is called tandem cooling. So tandem now you cooling. you are feeling warm now. Yeah. So just I. Wow. And this Keep actually. Give it 15 seconds. Yeah. In 15 seconds it will cool up. It feels like we're in AC in the middle of a desert. <laughs> Garlic plantation. You can pluck and eat. Can I try? Is this garlic? Wow. You will never. Huh? There is Swiss chart. Swiss chart. Swiss chart. Swiss chart. Yeah. There was a higher temperature. This yeah. is lower temperature. Taste check the difference. You okay. know the difference how it works. Like. So these were those colorful plants that we saw yeah. in the other greenhouse room. This is what it is. Swiss chart. Swiss chart. Yeah. yeah. Really nice. These are the turmeric plantations. Harvesting time right now. Of course, it looks like it's just uh, been uh, soiled. Shooting will start now. Look at this, the flowering process has started. What a beautiful tree for a drumstick, bro. And the grown drumstick. <laughs> so these are the dried uh, drumstick. These are the dried drumsticks. And why they keep them is because they get seeds from this. So inside they find seeds for new plantation. These are the seeds to plant new drumsticks. So amazing. So pretty. Can I see? Wow, look at these. So this is the air shower control room. It blows out air so that uh, if a person has dirt on them, it sanitizes the person. Okay, so this is an indoor vertical room completely. Um, the walls are fiberglass and so that the heat from outside doesn't enter the room and it stays cool. And uh, this is a new way of hydroponic farming right? yes. with yes. water. This is, uh, this is completely water based. It is uh, called uh, active hydroponics, which uses okay. nutrient media mm -hmm. as a grow solution. So we put water, mix fertilizers in that, okay. and uh, water goes in through this. Okay. okay, the whole plants plants are put in, in this, mm -hmm. the young plants in yeah. this sponge, okay. Yeah. They're transplanted in this sponge and kept here, okay. the saplings. And then the roots are there in the water. Okay. And then the water goes back to the drainage, mm -hmm. gets itself uh, collected outside in the reservoir, screened for, you know, all sorts of microorganisms and root hairs and everything and then okay. comes back. So the water is reused again? Reused again. Okay. Here we are talking of, uh, you know, production per square meter is very high because okay. you're going up. There the land area is suppose 100 mm. square meters. Here you're doing 100 into 10 times. Okay, wow. So like how that one required sunlight because of course it was yes, a greenhouse. Yes, it requires sunlight. This requires only we LED are, lights yeah. as part of uh, the sunlight. You don't really require sunlight. The LED lights give them enough heat or control enough light. heat uh, yeah. in terms of light uh, to for the plants to grow. So 
So after this, Indo Vertical Room is fully grown and set up for operation. After that, nobody else is allowed in this room except for the agronomist uh, for hygiene purposes. And if anybody wants to view how the plantation is moving ahead, they can view it from this viewing room. Or if there's any other visitor, they can view it from this viewing room. And uh, yeah, so till, till the plantation is fully grown, nobody is allowed to enter inside. Right now, we're allowed to enter because it's not started yet. Uh, room, this indoor uh, vertical farming room is empty. But I'm going to take you to another room where the plants are already grown and we can see how the plants actually grow and I will show you that as well. So let's, let's go there. Guys, if you, if eat, you eat today, today don't, don't forget, forget to thank a farmer. farmer.